And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Simic Flash. That's right, we got a donation deck here, Simic Flash. Some of y'all love it, some of y'all hate this deck, and that's okay. Um, but that's what we're going to be playing today. Um, I understand. Um, I understand being frustrated playing against the deck because the the role of the deck is to counter lots of spells, play everything instant speed, um, and things like that. So it's a difficult deck to play against, and um, and everything there. But it is a, a good quality deck, and um, not everybody hates it. You know, like so we're we're gonna be playing it here. It's it's a deck that's more fun to play than to play against. You know, being able to play all your cards at instant speed gives you so many options, gives you so much versatility. You get to make your decisions at the the latest possible time, which um, which is very powerful. Oh man, I didn't I didn't get those sleeves. So yeah, it's very possible. Sorry, it's very powerful being able to play everything instant speed, and so the deck is quite good. It's quite good there. Um, yeah, there's not really a middle group. Um, I guess. I I kind of consider myself in the middle group. I don't hate the deck whatsoever, um, but I don't like just love it. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of people don't like it at all. Uh, for specific card choices in here, this is a list that uh, the viewer that donated plays in paper. This is what they they play at at F and M and stuff like that. Um, so you know they have one they have one once upon a time. So we got one once upon a time in here. Um, I think that's fine. I don't think that you need a ton of once upon a times in this deck even though it is it is a good quality card but i think that's perfectly fine I, I don't think this is one like where you absolutely need four once upon a times um or anything like that i do like this brazen borrower quite a bit we got it we got a couple of unsummons there's there's not really too too much um you know there's not really too much to say about the deck you know for those of y'all that have been playing you know about uh, everything here we are going with a couple wildborn preservers so I like that. Don't always play Wildborn Preserver. Um, we got four Mystical Disputes in the sideboard for Okos, and I like this plan more than going like Spyglass uh, with with this deck. Uh, basically, if it does resolve, we have Borrower, Ether Gust, things that can can put it back and then try to counter it again. I could see playing more Ether Gusts right now, honestly. Ether Gust is um, pretty good with all these green decks everywhere, and it's. It's basically the deck's only answer to shifting Ceratops is to Ether Gust. So I, I could see playing more Ether Gusts. Um, I guess that would be in the spot of Tails Ends. You know, that would, those could be more Ether Gusts there. But we'll, we're going to play some games here first, though. Um, oh, you want me to change that up if I want to? Um, yeah, like I'd, I'd probably play. We've got at least three. All right, yeah, we'll just change that. We'll we'll get a third one in here. Okay, so like what we do with like we always do with donation decks, we go uh, play a league with them, see how they do. Um, we could just do this one in ranked. Kendis, do you want me just to play this one in ranked? Because Simic Flash is kind of mean, so. I, I would feel kind of bad playing against these people with Simic Flash. <laughs> yeah, because it, it can definitely be tilting. What would you like, Kendis? Dealer's Choice? Okay. All right, yeah, let's, let's go play it in ranked. Okay. We just reset Arena, and it's still, like, kind of laggy here. <laughs> it is kind of mean. I don't think that the Simic Flash is necessarily the best best of three deck, though. So this is a, this is a pretty big challenge for the deck. Yeah, I want to keep this. Yeah, yeah, Storm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do that. I I should be able to do that. I'll, I got to remember this time to do that, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make sure that I'm top 1,200 at the end of the month. What is it, the 27th? Uh, 
So last time we played a league with this deck, two of the five opponents roped us. Yeah. All right, so the aggro deck is is like the kind of deck that gives Simic Flash trouble. Could have really used a land here. Well, that's unfortunate. I have to negate that, but that means that they could play another creature. God, we could have really used a land there. I don't think I can negate it, because if they just play a creature like that. Can't really afford them to play a creature. Attacking just doesn't doesn't do anything right now. I'm gonna have to recounter the switches oven. I'm gonna have to bounce it with the borrower. No, I haven't. No, I haven't heard from Yud yet. Been okay. There we go. Oh, Yud, Yud just messaged me. Yay! Cool. Yud's working on the thumbnails now. Yay. Another cauldron? Familiar. Land. You're not land. We need to bounce the witch's oven and then negate it. I just couldn't do that earlier.
How many lands do we have in here? Hope we have 24, uh, 23. All right, I would I would recommend playing 24 lands. I think we're going to change that after this game. After this match, that is. As to McFlash, you've never beaten our opponent's deck. I definitely think 24 lands is necessary in this deck. I don't I don't know if I don't, Yeah, I don't like 23, especially when you have Spectral Sailor. Like that's like the point of Spectral Sailor is to be able to activate when you have more lands. So I did that first so that if they wanted to activate Priest in response to me playing Cutthroat to make me sacrifice, they would have to sacrifice their Rankle first and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have taken damage right then. Brazen Borrower being awesome. Helping us get rid of that Witch's Oven and get rid of the Wrinkle there. Hmm. Fortunate. They don't have the one extra mana. <clears throat> but, you know, definitely need them to block with the Rankle, because otherwise the rank the Rankle kills us, so bouncing the Priest. Ambusher should finish this out for us. Okay. GG. I don't know why they conceded there, because they, they still had, like, Wrinkle. But I guess because I kept the card on top. Maybe I'm supposed to just put that card down at the bottom. Because I guess if they would have drawn, like, another Wrinkle or another Claim the Firstborn... I, just, I guess claim the firstborn I had blocked. Okay. Yeah, that's a difficult deck to beat.
I'm not sure what I really want to do here. Don't know if we really need Veil of Summer. I'm going to take out a Preserver for a Tail's End. And give this a try. Thanks, for, thanks Frank. Yeah, that was a really good game. Four drops are so good. On the play, it's a lot easier to keep this. It's harder to on the draw. Yeah, Veil of Summer is, is awesome against the pre-sacrifice. The Tail's End also counters that as well, but you know, it costs an additional mana and doesn't draw me a card. Um, but yeah, Tail's End can counter that, and Tail's End can counter Wrinkle and counter... Um, Judith. I assume they're playing Judith. And counter a, like a Witch's Oven trigger if that is going to matter. Oh, come on, deck, you better draw this fourth land. They missed a land drop. Oh, deck. Got to be kidding me. Karstanos, thanks for the resub. I appreciate that. All right, so whether or not we crack this Fabled Passage, um, obviously I want to draw a land. And so if we draw a land, it's you know, so like taking a land out of the deck makes it less of a chance of us drawing a land. But if we don't draw a land, then we can't have like Spectral Sailor plus Negate by not fetching. I would, I would never play this deck with 23 lands ever again. Because this deck, you have, to, you have to play your first four land drops, otherwise you lose. 24 is just, or 23 is just not enough. My opponent had missed land drops there, so I, I was thinking that the once upon a time they were going to be digging for a land with it, which is why I negated it. Obviously, my the very worst case scenario was that they that they had another land, and then they also had um, a witch's oven as well. 
That was obviously the very worst case scenario for me. We'll go Veil of Summer instead of Tail's End. We're going to take out a Spectral Sailor too with Mayhem Devil. Okay. Game three. Please draw lands. Come on, we didn't draw lands last time, deck. You can do it this time now. So no lands last game, that means lands this game. Obviously, that duress. I really thought about having Veil of Summer for turn one duress. I was like, ah, that's not that's not very likely they're gonna have turn one duress. It's a lot. I was like, it's more likely that we're gonna need that two life with the quench. Oh my god. Four drop. Worst possible. Yeah, if we had more Once Upon a Times, we could play less lands, but we don't. We This deck has to have 24 lands with, with only one Once Upon a Time. It's just not really acceptable. Yeah, best of one, best of one that fixes it helps fix your mana a little bit. So like you're, you can play a less land in, in best of one. That is a tough matchup for us though. The person said that they've uh, never beaten that deck with Simic Flash. I can see why. That's a tough matchup. All right, so what are we cutting for a land? Hey, we get a Master Tree Orb. We get that Royal Scions. That's a good one. Okay. Probably want another island. Yeah, I think we want another island. All right, so options to cut. Like we could get rid of the fourth spectral sailor. Hey, hey, jokers. Yeah, the Soul Typhoon deck's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, could get rid of the third quench. Could get rid of an opt. I think I wanna get rid of an opt. Honestly. Yeah. 
kind of don't really want the opt. Like we have Castle Vantress also if we have extra lands. Maybe we should play 25. Yeah, you you play zero ops in your current version. Yeah, I, I don't I don't love opt. Wonder if we should get another counter spell in the main deck instead of this other opt or another unsummon. I kind of want to play another unsummon. Unsummon was like critical of like how we won that that first game. It's just a really good card. Let's do that. Okay. So let's see. I'm gonna update our deckless command. Get a seventh island. Take out the ops and get another unsummon in here. All right, let's try this. No, I wouldn't want creatures that add mana. This deck could play Growth Spiral, but if you're if you're cutting lands for Growth Spiral, it just takes out the power of Growth Spiral. Though. But I, I don't mind Growth Spiral in this deck. Alright, we got four lands. I love it. Because now, now we can scry lands to the bottom. We don't need we don't really need too much more than four, but gotta have four. So if they have, you know, they could have turn two Oko here, which would obviously be really bad for me. I, I could have unsummoned and then negate, and then have negate available. But I don't think that's a very good uh, line. I think that's kind of a waste of an unsummon, honestly. So uh, we have, because we have the Brazen Borrower, if they did have turn two Oko, we'd be able to bounce it with Borrower anyway, and then still be able to negate it. So I think that's, that's a better line for us. Yeah, I like Once Upon a Time in Simic Flash. Um, there's there's one in the list here because the the person that donated has just has one copy. Um, I don't think I don't think it's necessarily a four of, but I like it because there are some just really impactful creatures to find later on in the game with like Ambusher and Frilled Mystic, and it helps smooth out mana and everything too. All right, well, this looks great for us now.
<clears throat> and that's why we got that extra unsummon in there. Unsummon was clutch. All right, Ether Gust, Tails End, Dispute. So basically we're replacing Quench with better cards. So this is 62. I think Sailor could be important here. I think this could be just a, a long matchup where drawing the extra cards to Sailor is important. And I already cut the Preservers. I'm going to get rid of the Once Upon a Time with us being on the draw. I think we'll have... I think we'll be able to hit our land drops with this, you know, having the 24 lands and us being on the draw here. And like I said, it could be a longer game. This is pretty awkward of trying to play Sinister Sabotage on turn three. Good. I couldn't really I couldn't really beat Oko anyway, so I'm just hoping we top deck a blue source, honestly. Didn't play a land at least. One bite, and all your cares so that part's good for me. Yeah, trying to kill Oko with combat damage is the worst feeling. I know it really is. So we got we got three Brazen Borrower, three Ether Gust as cards we need to be drawing to get this Oko out of here. Not a bad card in a gate. I'm 
but it's not something that deals with Oko. Change your ways. I have I've not found that here on that long games you usually lose anyway. I've done I've found long games to be pretty good for this deck with the with the spectral sailors. While this list that we're playing is not my my list in in general, I I would be playing for spectral sailor. Hey priestess. Basically, the reason why it took a while, I didn't, I really don't want to counter that because I need to have a counter spell for Oko if we can get rid of it. And I, I really prefer to draw a card with Spectral Sailor instead. I could have not countered and just let it resolve and then go and play an Ambusher and just blocked Questing Beast with Ambusher and just traded because Ambusher is less valuable with Oko on the battlefield. If it wasn't for Oko, we'd have this pretty easily with the ambushers. That Oko card. Power surges through these lands. We're gonna be on the play for game three though. So that's a good good sign and you know, we have like the four mystical disputes and all the counter spells that we have in our deck for a reason. Good job, Baloney Pony. Got to diamond. Diamond one, good job. Oh dear. So it's a game you're interested in. Welcome to the field. <clears throat> I don't really know why they turned their goose into three threes. Behold, nature's true power.
So they could have two more attackers that they want with Oko and with Nissa. So I can't... You know, so that's, that's potentially six attackers. So I can't attack with Spectral Sailor here. I was hoping they would do that. I was hoping they were going to attack with everything, though. I was hoping they were going to do that and tick up with Nissa and attack with everything. take out two things with cutthroat attack or if I wait a turn I can take out three things They just have one forest left for, for doing two mana. Oh, they've had time to elk to turn these into night elk ambushers. Oh dear. They just chose not to. Which I was very happy about. I wouldn't mind drawing an unsummon to be able to bounce. Right. My elemental friend. Ambusher, that wouldn't be bad. That's a great card. Okay. So you attack there, you attack there, you attack there. Um, that's six. They still got six attackers if they just take it. I'll have six blockers. So we're good there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, they'll have seven attackers. It's still fine. Cause I have I have brazen borrower. They can they can bounce one. Like you know, a sailor. I get to draw a borrower. So it's all good.
Really wish I had one more mana. Hmm. Definitely considering just bouncing Oko right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wish I had I wish I had the mana to bounce and sabotage and dispute. If I'm one short. What's what's the worst they can play? If I bounce Oko right now and they play it and then I counter it, then they'd have two, four, five. They'd have five mana, potentially. They'd have to be tapping these lands though. We could have another Oko. AQ, EQ, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate that. Sorry, I was a little preoccupied there. That's our fourth sub of the day. Okay. Stabilized. All right, one and one. Thanks, new bloco. Yep, and GG's. Looks like we'll have to reset again after this match. Man, you really have to reset so often. I wonder if there's one too many forests in this deck. We draw blue mana. Gross. So there's seven islands and two castles. So like nine, nine lands that produce just blue. And there's five forests. Five lands have produced just green. Oh, I don't have two blue. All right, this is just gonna happen. I was considering, so basically, I, I, I didn't, I didn't have the two blue, but I was considering playing Spectral Sailor. And gross. <clears throat> 
and then they sacrifice a token for the Wicked Wolf, and then I unsummon Wicked Wolf. You play four fours in your list, and it's the perfect amount. Do you play a third Fabled Passage, or do you just play... Do you just have more... You're on two passage. You just have another island. So you just have you just have more islands. Force is definitely our worst land, but it's necessary. Like we gotta have the two green for the frilled mystic and ambusher, so it's it's kinda rough. It's like we want the two green for that, but we don't actually want any forests. Like we just want to have two dual lands, ideally in all islands. Why not play the wolf before the fight so they have to sack foods? I guess, yeah, I guess I should have, like after they targeted. After they targeted, but before the fight happens, then ambusher, then my thing's a 3-2, they'd have to use the food. We really have to just draw another forest. This is something that's just not going to happen very often, though. Drawing four forests, like that's that's something that's not going to happen very often. I hope my opponent goes for lethal here. Just have main deck Veil Summer. Okay. <laughs> that would have been bad. Huh. It wasn't lethal. I had 10, they were at 11. Yeah, and someone's pretty great. Yeah, we gotta side in some islands.
Hmm. I definitely see my opponent playing Shifting Ceratops, which could be a problem. I'm just going to replace Quench with Ether Gusts. There's other cards that are like, you know, situationally good, but I think this is all I want to do here. Cutting the quenches because my opponent's playing a bunch of uh, Gilded Goose and Paradise Druid, and I'm sure they're going to have a lot of interaction. Like they're they're a rock deck that's going to have a lot of interaction, so I think we're just going to be going to a late a late match. <clears throat> and I think Quench is going to be a dead card very fast, and I don't want to draw a Quench. Basically, just never want to draw Quench. If it's in the opener, that's fine, but I never want to draw the card. Plus, we used Quench last game. <clears throat> There's a good chance that my opponent just plays around Quench since we played it last game. So a lot of people will play around Quench after seeing it. So we can just get the value of having Quench in our deck but not actually have it in our deck. Considering on summoning the Paradise Druid to slow him down, I think I want to do that. I, I can't really do anything about a Nissa next turn. I'm very worried about next turn Nissa. And you're quite charmed to meet me. Well, GG. Your new look is enchanting. Yeah, I mean, game over. Uh, it's so much easier being on the play. Yeah, we'll be on the play for game three. My opponent did not play around Quench, though. They were very happy with their four mana to throw down Oko. Surely you must that would have been a lot better for me if they would have played around Quench and, and waited to play Oko. All right, we're not completely dead. We are pretty dead, but not completely dead.
It's not poison. Trust me. Alive or alive? Now we're even close, closer to being dead. And that's that's magic in a nutshell. Just to be on the play. So if my opponent plays this right, which they've been playing pretty well. Yep, that was the first thing they were supposed to do. That was not what they were supposed to do, though. I mean, all they they should have just gone to attackers, and then I ha I have to play something because they have lethal. And you know, because they can make make another food with the goose, and then they have lethal, so I have to do something. And then after I do something, then they resolve Oko. But Wicked, Wicked Wolf finished this thing out. We at least countered Oko on our way out of here. It was probably going to die. So we learned more about their deck. They only played Golgari cards last game, so I didn't I didn't know they were Soul Tide. I didn't know they were gonna have Oko, honestly. They were just two color last game, so I, I didn't sideboard in like Mystical Disputes, for example. Can't really. I mean, I would love to be able to make Wildborn Preserver larger, but they also have Golgari Queen, so I can't. Alive or alive. Witness the ties that bind us all. Be wary of the ground you walk on. I think they have numbers for top 1500 right now. I think they changed that from 1200 to 1500. Hey, Tree Fitty, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that.
It is unfortunate seeing zero Veil of Summers and losing. Because it's really hard to beat even a single Veil of Summer. So a game where the opponent has zero Veil of Summers, that's a game that we really want to win. Hey, Blade. All right, let's see how we do. Yeah, good chance that we would have won that last game if we were on the play. I can't say it's definite, but yeah, we, we would have had, like, Oko would have been, yeah, we would have filled Mystic to Oko and had Frill Mystic for Vraska and everything. Yeah, yeah, we probably win that if we were on the play. Because, yeah, actually, the the Oko, Vraska, and the other 3-3, three, three, we could have countered all of them. All right, lands. Yay. Absurd. Who's more foolish? The fool. The fool who surely you must be famished. So hostile to the truth. invite you to change your ways. Yes, this card's just absurd. I'll think up a fun fate for you. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Yeah, I was planning on... on I've had people ask about Feather, so I, I was planning on playing Feather um, tomorrow on Best of One Day Monday. But I haven't really been seeing any Feather. I don't, I don't think it can really compete with... <clears throat> with these Simic decks? I don't think so. There's a lot of people that like Best of One though, TCM. And so just doing it one day a week. And I'm, I'm gonna be playing Brawl tomorrow also, because Brawl's Best of One also, so Brawl fits on Best of One Day Monday. You play unranked for dailies and then stop because playing against Oko makes Arena not fun anymore. Yeah, Oko is not... It's not enjoyable. Because, you know, like, we you know we have a counterspell for it when they play it on turn three, but they just had it on turn three with counterspell backup. I don't, I don't know what we're supposed to do about that. 
I guess we're supposed to have two counter spells on turn three. It's so hard to to have two counter spells on turn three though. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to try to fight over the 1-1s one or counter Love Struck Beast. Like, you know, like I could like unsummon the 1-1 one -one and then try to counter like their next 1-1 one -one kind of thing. And just let them have a 5-5. Five five. That just seems like so much more of a hassle than just letting them have this 1-1. One one. So we're not going to get beat by a 1-1. One one. That's interesting and weird. All right, so they have to have more giant killers because this this night pack ambusher is revealed, so they know that I have this devastating four four that's the best card in my deck, and yet they don't want to. They would rather play the one two. Where there's not very much pressure, it's just a 1 2. Hey, Tara. So, why to play the temple third instead of fifth? Because the third, the third mana is not any mana that I need to use there. But fifth, having like ambush, ambusher, then unsummon to save ambusher. Is valuable. The, the turn that turn, I was not. I was not using that third mana. So I thought that was a perfect time to fit in Temple. Well, for them playing the, the giant killer out, it makes me feel like they have another giant killer, but not attacking and not doing anything me kind of means March of the Multitudes. So we'll just see. Really need to find another negate. <clears throat> that march isn't scary. It's the the next march. If they would draw another march, then then it would be scary. This one's whatever. Even with Luxodon, it's it's whatever. Ambusher. 
outclasses this. I'm not going to use an unsummon on a 2-2. Two -two. We may need unsummon to save Ambusher. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that, Tara. It happens. Hey, Chep, what's up? Nah. Hey, <laughs> there you go. You got first place in a brawl yesterday with Oko. That's awesome. Good job. Yeah, Oko. Like I said before, Oko's just way too strong. Especially for Brawl. So. More wolves! Okay, good. As long as they don't have March of the Multitudes, we're fine. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you so much. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not planning on playing any Pioneer. Pioneer not on. On, on Arena. Pioneer does look really interesting. I, I like Pioneer. I mean, I like other formats too. You know, Modern, Legacy, like they're fun, but I just like playing Arena. Yeah, I gotta get all these puppers out here. I don't like whenever Arena has lag issues like this, though. I don't really like that part of Arena. And the waiting game. Would I prefer Modern or Standard if both were on Arena? It, it kind of changes... I guess it kind of changes a little bit depending on. Uh, I guess I should have just borrow, borrowed that in response so the, the fairy guide mother would have died as well. So that puts me on a clock, I suppose. Um, I've kind of I kind of like standard more than modern though. Just standard, you have a lot more mid range type stuff, and and that's the kind of player that I am. I like the longer mid range games and stuff. Modern is so much, um, you know, two ships passing through the night. You know, like there's just people playing. You're just trying to do your your broken thing really fast, faster than your opponent's broken thing. And just playing who has the better opening hand magic isn't as enjoyable to me. Oh, I should have played the cutthroat first. But I guess this lets me double scry with castle, so that's good. <laughs> Clocks are the worst. Captain Hook. <clears throat> I guess I could start attacking with all these 5-5s five pretty soon. Mm. It's 
It's not March of the Multitudes, which is the card I'm the most scared of, but it's probably the card I'm the second most scared of. Um... Sure. Yep, I liked when Izu was viable in Modern 2. Had a couple of top eights with Naya Company. Had them back to back weekends, actually. When was that? January 2016? Yeah, that's a while ago now. So we got 12 of these things. So many puppers. Uh, Valari, yes, I did. Yep, I do not have a Magic Online collection anymore. I did sell that. All right, let's see. So green white tokens. Need these negates. You know, we just gotta be worried about March of the Multitudes also negate counters Veil of Summer for not much mana. Um, I don't know if we really need Ether Gust. It's basically the one drop, uh, Innkeeper and March of the Multitudes. Those are the two cards that we gotta be scared of. Innkeeper is a little bit harder to deal with. Um, so I guess Ether Gust can help bounce Innkeeper. <clears throat> we already have six bounce spells, though. Come on. Come on. Yep. What happened? Get back in here. Oh, arena. Do you enjoy Commander? To me, EDH is the most enjoyable format to play with a group of friends. Just re so refreshing from the standard meta. I completely agree. Yep, I like. I really like Commander. Um, I don't really play it right now but i have a, a friend group back home that plays edh a couple of times a week and it's always a whole lot of fun and i i plan on moving back you know they're in the, the dallas area as y'all know I, I plan on moving back i've been uh, i've been spending a good amount of time this week looking at houses and everything um i'm hoping to move back in the next couple of months you know, by like January. And then I'll be be getting my EDH on again. Quench is good against March of the Multitudes, that is true. They're probably not playing around it too much there. We got a, enough other good things against March of the Multitudes. <laughs> no, probably won't be streaming EDH though, no. Come on, you don't want to attack with the Innkeeper? Mm 
I don't know, maybe I should be keeping that Frilled Mystic, honestly. No. I kind of need more land. That's that's basically the difference. Like, there's no difference in, like, rules between Brawl and EDH. The difference is, yeah, you get 100 cards instead of 60, and you can play any cards that have been printed ever with... With, like, there is a ban list, so with a ban list, but you can play any cards. Want a shock land? <sighs> Going down to six. If that was a basic land, I would have kept it. Yeah, there's two ways we we're losing this. Innkeeper, drawing a bunch of cards, or March. Looks like they had the Innkeeper. At least the Lovestruck Beast can't attack anymore. All right, let's go to the next game. All right, Sailor may be a little slow here. They're pretty aggressive. So I'm, I'm gonna take out a couple Sailors and bring the Quenches back in, on, especially on the play, Quench is gonna be better. Doesn't, doesn't do very much. It's just a bunch of bounce.
Okay. It's tough putting back another ambusher, but I think we need to keep these counters. Why not block with... I mean, I, I want... I needed, like, the... I needed the 1-1 one, one to be able to chump block also, that last one. What makes a card or hand better on the play or draw? So, like, Quent... You know, uh, Quench is counter unless they pay two. It's basically when you're on the play, you get you have mana faster than your opponent. And so if you're on the draw and your opponent has mana faster than you, it's hard to always have Quench be able to counter something before they have two extra mana to be able to pay for Quench. But yeah, I guess, like, a card. A card that's good when you're ahead or even is better on the play. A card that's that's good when you're behind, like a removal spell, is better on the draw. Yeah, we're not trying to quench one drops. It is bad against one drops, but yeah, we're not that's not what we we're not really trying to counter one drops. You know, we're gonna try to quench March of the Multitudes. Using it on the Love Struck Beast while we can. I should not have played that. It's not end step. Now they can resolve something else. They did not. Do I trade two damage? I can attack for two, they attack me back for two, and, and so on. We keep on going. Do I trade damage? Yes. Because they want their creatures un untapped for convoking also. So I... Put two four drops down to the bottom. Okay, I don't think I trade two for three though. please Ugh, I guess we have to take that one not ideal
Well, the good news is Lovestruck Beast can't attack anymore. That's the good news. Did no attacking. So if they're if they're doing no attacking, that means they have March of the Multitudes. So they're waiting for me to tap out so they get to march. They should they should still be a serving in with the Luxodon. They could still march for a bunch. Alright, well. They're serving in with the Luxodon, so I don't have time to wait anymore. They would continue doing nothing, we'd have time, but we don't have time anymore. Can I just draw lands? I'm definitely glad we added a 24th land at least. Okay, you want to play in the league next time, Kendis? All right. Draw a land. Well, that was us not being able to play our spells. You know, whenever you whenever you die, having multiple sinister sabotages in hand, can't play your spells. That's rough. So that's it's unfortunate that we lost multiple games because of our mana base, like multiple matches. You want to go green? Red's got a lot of good ones too, though. We'll go with green. Hey, Kithkin. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. And we get a pack. We'll crack that open also. Uh, no, the, the mana system in, in Magic is honestly perfect. It's, you're saying it's an antiquated system. It's not, it's not at all. It's, it's the reason why Magic is the best game that there is. It's, the mana system is just perfect in, in Magic. It's the reason why any deck can beat any other deck that has just enough variants. It's <clears throat> the reason why magic has been around for, 
you know, 26 years now and it's still just the best game better than like the other games that, um, that try to be like magic, but have different mana systems is, is because this is, this really is just the, the perfect way to have just, um, like, yes, it's not, it's not, it doesn't always work out for you, but if, if you want your, your mana to always work out perfectly, I mean, that's, you're just playing chess at that point. I think I think the variance is is just the perfect level of variance. I am not being sarcastic whatsoever. I think that's what that's what makes magic just a great game. Honestly. Like it's the mana system in magic is very good. I don't I don't think that playing games like like with Hearthstone how you just get like one every single turn. I don't I don't think that that's an enjoyable experience over time. I think just how, you know, like anything hap like anything can happen in magic and, and, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, like later on in the game, you draw a lot of lands. Sometimes you don't. Um, it just, it, it makes for a lot of good, interesting stories. It makes for a lot of, a lot of time spent building your deck, trying to build the, your, the mana base. That's the best that you can for your deck. It makes, it makes just for so, so much, um, interesting like you know observations about the deck while you're playing interesting uh deck decision choices um it's 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 perfect it's it's what's made magic the best game over the last um 26 years now um now there are definitely times that that uh you know, things don't go well for you. Like that's, that's how it goes. And so, yeah, we lost two games there where we didn't hit enough land drops, but, um, that's, that's the, um, that's like what, like, you know, we could be playing more once upon a times, more ops. We could just be playing more lands. Like there's, there's ways to be, to be playing more lands, but we're playing more powerful cards with like the creatures counter spells. And so like, that's like the trade off of consistency and power that you take. What's up Luke D. Thanks for the Twitch prime sub. Uh, in first, I can't say I, I, I have never heard of the game myth guard. So I, I don't know anything about that game whatsoever, but all I can say is that I think that the, the mana system and magic is perfect. Hey, what's up, Chief Seth? Um, so anyway, so there we go. That's Simic Flash. We played over in ranked. Didn't have the best record. Um, but this deck is still very good. I I honestly like like where our list is at for the most part. I kinda wish we had I kinda wish we had more than two hard counter spells for creature like basically more than two essence captures kind of wish we had more than two of those i think we, we were talking about like maybe just cutting a forest for another island i'm not sure about that honestly maybe we need to get rid of a spectral sailor Maybe getting rid of both ops is too greedy for mana wise. I kind of want another essence capture. Hmm. Or maybe another negate. I kind of want just one more one more two mana counter spell, basically. I'm not sure if I want it to be negate. Essence capture. Um, is Preserver actually good? Honestly, I'm not that sold on Wildborn Preserver. I still haven't been. I I kind of think that just more counter magic is better. Honestly.
I I've never been like thrilled with Wildborn Preserver. This is what we just had playing it. I could see getting rid of preservers for sure. If if I would play the deck, I know like like this uh specific list, this donation deck, you know, like they only have the one once upon a time. But I think if I would play the deck, I would I would get rid of what I'd probably do is is make probably keep this seven and five, but I think just getting rid of preservers for once upon a times would be good so that because more once upon a times help you hit these land drops that we need, and then we can have the sailors. That's probably the thing to do is just get rid of preservers and play once upon a times. Yeah, that, that's probably the thing to do. Yeah. Opt is too slow. Opt also is really good with Cutthroat, though. Like, one mana putting a counter on Cutthroat is nice also. But, um, yeah, I understand. I, I do think Opt is... You don't usually have time to cast Opt. Opt is like a, a late-game card that it, when you draw it, it's not so bad. No, I, I wouldn't cut Frilled Mystic. I think Frilled Mystic is awesome. So I think I think I would go with I would go with like two. I mean I know I know Candace, I know you don't don't have them, but I, I would I would go with the Once Upon a Times. So I wouldn't play Preserver, and then probably go Eight Island Four Forest with having the extra Once Upon a Times to be able to find them. I think that's what I'd want to do there. Havocus, <laughs> keep going strong despite Oko oppression. Thank you so much there, Havocus. I appreciate that resub. Okay, so there's Simic Flash. Um, yep, played there for a two-hour league, even though we just got the four matches in. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. So if you're watching the video on YouTube, I hope you learned stuff and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And please hit the like button over there and leave some comments as well. Um, I, I would appreciate both of those. You can talk about the mana system if you would like. Also, I would appreciate if you check out the Patreon page and consider supporting over there if you're watching it later on YouTube. Um, there's a link in the uh, description down below, but it's also just patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. I'll put that link right here for, for y'all as well. Um, and if you like my content, that's an easy place to support, just $3 a month. So um, not too much there. Okay. All right. So that's the McFlash. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.